My name is Ethan Ortiz. I'm a cybersecurity advisor and founder of Here You Co LLC. In this video, I'll show you how to start integrating with the Ubiquiti Unify controller using their web API. I took a subset of the uh, requests that I have uh, for this short video. I'll go start with the login. There's the login call with a, since it's a post and it requires a JSON payload with the username and password. Go ahead and launch that. That sets my headers um, cookie field to the uh, cookie necessary to make the subsequent requests. So now these requests will work because Postman will automatically use the cookies that were provided by this request. All right, so let's say you want to assign an IP address to a specific machine. Uh, we can look up that machine by MAC address get its inf the information we need, which is uh, the ID, that's the, the device ID, and the network ID. Um, this is the I IP address that's been given to that machine via DHCP, and you can tell that by looking for the fixed IP equals, and it doesn't have one. So this is a DHCP assigned IP address, but we want to give it an, a, a static one. So we take those two uh, values, the network ID and the underscore ID, which is the device ID, and we're going to populate them into a uh, put in this put we're going to put the uh, device ID network ID the IP we want it to have henceforth now so it will when that device does do a DHCP it will always get that address so we'll go ahead and hit send and we get a 200 and if we scroll down you now see the field fixed IP and there you go so use fixed IP equals true so there you go, that's that's done. Now, if we want to unassign a fixed IP, uh, the request is a little bit different. We still use the device ID uh, in the URL, uh, but the body changes, uh, we get, get to remove a lot of the other stuff. So use fixed IP false. And we're gonna go ahead and hit that. And now when we scroll down, use fixed IP false. So it's not gonna, it may not necessarily get that. If this, is the, if this device, uh, spends a long time off the network and might lose access to that IP when somebody else picks it up. Next, let's get information on a particular machine. So this is our template where you can uh, see here for yourself the URL to query to, for a specific client's information. We're going to use our LG uh, media player as an example. So we're going to request information on that media player. As you can see, we got some statistics on packet transmissions, uh, what IP address it has, what network it's a part of, what was the last time it was seen on the network, and so on. Now, now we're going to get some pretty cool stuff. Uh, what if you wanted to block a particular device on the network from actually getting network access? It's not 802.1x, but uh, it's pretty cool uh, little feature so you can take advantage of this and maybe your home automation. Uh, for example, maybe you want specific devices to uh, be denied access to the network at night or, or while you're on vacation. Certain devices can be told to uh, disconnect and only allow the absolute minimum number of machines online. So let's take a look at an example. So first of all, we can query for all machines, um, all clients. Okay, so you can get that long list. This one's 3.34K. Nice little list of all the machines in my network. And here's a template on blocking a particular device, but I am I'm gonna focus on the media player. Uh, it's good to note that you can actually block more than one at a time. So as you can tell, uh, as you can see there, I can specify multiple MAC addresses, but I'm not going to use multiple MAC addresses. I'm just going to use the, the one LG. And I'm going to actually run a ping, a continuous ping here, so we can see it in action. So here we go. Send the block. The block has been received by the Unify controller, and that LG system can no longer um, reach the network. So now, uh, as you, you saw the block, and the unblock is very simple. You just add un in front of block, give it the MAC address, MAC address you want, and we're going to go ahead and send that post. And you can see down here, 
uh, it's almost immediate. It's fantastic. Um, so yeah, and, and we'll take a look at uh, adding these into a script at the end. All right, next, uh, let me shut this down. It's not bothering us there, distracting us. What if you want to change the uh, password on your uh, wireless network? So here's a way to do it. So first of all, let's take a look at the existing wireless configuration. So this, this is a, a network I have for demo purposes just for this video. Uh, has a password. This is the password to get on this Wi-Fi. And we're going to change it. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, oh, by the way, you can tell here that it's enabled. Let's go ahead and update it. We're going to update it with this JSON body, uh, X passphrase, and then a new password. So we hit send, and now we have the new password right there. Okay, pretty st straightforward. Um, uh, just like to point out, I am taking advantage of the Postman variables, uh, environment variables, so that's why you see this instead of the actual uh, network ID. All right, next, um, enabling and disabling um, a network. Maybe you want your net wireless networks to be uh, invisible. I don't know when you're on vacation. Um, it's during certain times of the day. Um, you, I don't know. Use your imagination. I don't know what your needs are, but at least you'll know, you'll know how to enable and disable a wireless uh, network. And if you're using Unify, you could have many different wireless networks uh, set up and have certain ones only come online at certain times uh, for certain devices. So let's see. We go to enable wireless network. We need the uh, wireless network ID which you can collect with the get wireless config call and we need a JSON body that just says enable true and since it is already enabled let's go ahead and run disabled first which is as you would you would have guessed enabled false there you go so here pretty simply enabled false so this uh, alpha trion test is no longer visible uh, it's been shut down so let's go ahead and turn it back on and you can see enable true. Simple as that. Let's move on. Let's say you're out and about or you're stuck somewhere far away from home, but you still need access to get to your home network. If you planned ahead, you can have some, something like this set up where you can just flick a switch and have your uh, Unify controller open up a forwarding rule to your internal SSH or internal uh, SMB shares or whatever and uh, here's how you do it all right so first of all we can go take a look at what rules are already there so, so here are the port forwarding rule that's there now that has an ID uh, the interface that it's on of course WAN because we're gonna come in uh, through the internet what port uh, and where to forward to internally okay we can create a new one on the fly here so we're gonna add here on the fly, 23. 22223 two, 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 now goes to that server. Okay, we're not going to specify an ID because it's, the system is going to give us one as soon as it's done. We just need to specify the site ID. That's a requirement there. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's hit send. And now we have this ID for this particular request. And let's take a look again at our user created rules. And we should have two rules in there, one for port 2222 and 2223. And probably should have gave it a different name, but regardless, it has different IDs. So they're e easily distinguishable there. So let's go ahead and uh, enable one of these. So we're gonna, as you can see here, enabled equals false. So just because you created the port forward rules doesn't mean it's on. We're gonna go ahead and copy that we're gonna go ahead and copy that and go to enable port forward rule we're gonna paste this there since we just created this one we're gonna paste that in there um, and in the body we're gonna put enable true and now that port forward is open so if anyone does an SSH to 22223, 
they're gonna end up on this machine on port 22. But let's go ahead and turn it off anyway. Okay, so now I have a rule that I can turn, flip a switch and I can open up SSH remotely. And then you, you use your imagination, use the tools at your disposal, whether it's uh, if this and that, or um, Amazon, uh, you can, I can totally picture someone saying, um, Alexa, open up SSH and triggering a call to your Unify to, to have the ability to communicate back to your servers at home in a more secure fashion. And then when you're done, you can actually um, delete that entirely. If you, if you don't want to just disable it, you can go ahead and delete the entire thing. But uh, I find that uh, a really good idea is to have an enable and disable very simply turn on and off um, access to the net to your home network. All right, let me clean this up a little bit and we'll get to the last. So here's the call. It's just a simple get and it just re retrieves all of the events. So this would be pretty useful if you wanted to get into a uh, logging system um, other than uh, the Unify system. Maybe you want to put it in Elasticsearch or convert it into a Grafana or whatever. Uh, and then here's the call for uh, the deep packet inspection events. Uh, and the categories uh, are right here. Cat, the like cat six is basically voice over IP. And cat three is for file transfer and so on. So that covers um, the basics that I wanted to cover when it comes to the postman request. Now we're gonna actually convert these to uh, a curl and a Python. Um, we'll go ahead, skip ahead, and clean this up. So I cleaned up the interface, and let's actually do a really basic example of a login in curl. So we're going to go ahead and go to code and go curl. We're going to copy that out, and then we're going to paste it into Notepad over here. We do not need that right now because this is the first login and that should be enough for us to log in uh, but it's going it should be enough to log in but it's gonna fail because it's an HTTPS and we're using a self-signed certificate a Unify comes with a its own certificate so we need to add the insecure like that so let's save this as login dot uh, let's call this uh, like that. All right. If I run this, I am it, it's going to work, but uh, we just get a reply with a uh, a message. Go ahead and drop the bash on this Windows system and do that, and I get this reply. But I didn't get the cookies, so I need to actually specify that it grabbed the cookies and store them somewhere because I want to use them in the other query. So I'm going to add that line and when I paste. Now when I do a directory, I see there's a cookie file in there. So it's got cookies. All right, so that's step one in this little batch file we're going to basically have our shell script. A first call for a login, save the cookies, and then let's say we want to block a well, you know what? Let's get events. Events would be cool. Let's get a lot of events. So we're going to go code to curl. And then we definitely need that cookie now. Right? Oh, actually, sorry. We don't have to push that there because that's going to change, right? So we need to, again, specify and secure. But now we're going to use a minus B cookie.txt, and that'll read this file that was saved on the file system and automatically append it into the headers uh, with the set cookie command, set cookie uh, value. Okay, so let's copy that out and we're gonna paste it in here. And there's our events. So if we do not include, if we paste that in without the cookie, this is what we get, login required. Again, because we don't have uh, the cookie setting. So that covers how to do it with curl. Let's do it with Python. I'm going to 
go ahead and clear this out. And let's go back to the login code, Python. Paste that in here. Again, remember, we're assuming that this is the first time we're making the query over. So I'm going to label these because we're going to change it for all the other, for the next command. So we're going to add login payload, login URL, and then we'll change that here as well. Login URL, login payload. Now, because this is uh, an HTTPS site, and we're using Python, we need to specify verify equals false so that it lets us in even though the certificate's not properly signed. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And we're gonna, now we're gonna grab the cookie. So we're gonna do that, import a library. And then we're gonna say cookies equal response dot headers set cookie. And now we'll have cookies um, to chew on, on the, for the next request. Go ahead and save that. And this will be login by. Okay. And let's do the same query, the events. Switch over to Python. That's what I love about Postman's code button. This helps, pro helps in prototyping. Events URL events headers and we're gonna change this up a bit. We're gonna remove this because remember this changes and we're gonna say cookies. Headers. Oh, and we can't forget the verify equals false. And um, actually, no, no, let's print the response dot text. So whatever is in the response body, uh, we're going to be able to print that out there. So if this, if I did everything perfect on the first try, and I should be able to just, if I need to drop out of uh, Bash, do Python and login. URL not defined. Oh, yep. Of course, I didn't do it all perfect on the first try. Let's try it now. There we go. So now you have the request to log in, grab the cookie, and then make the request uh, for all the events. And that's it. Uh, if anybody has any uh, specific requests, please leave them in the comments, um, and I'll I can add an addendum video uh, for any particular requests and I'll do my best to put something up there and I tend to end my videos with if you liked it like it see you next time